Hi everyone. Good morning. As part of the today's session, we are going to see how exactly we can identify an object for a particular application under test in the debugging mode. Okay, how can we deal with it precisely in a debugging mode? We are going to see as part of our today's session. So what I'm going to do right now means as we have already uh, generated one Swift file in which I'm just adding down a function. So moving ahead in our upcoming sessions, anyways, we are going to create a multiple files and uh, we will just pass on that information in between those uh, files. But for now, I'm just trying to see the locators and I just want to create that particular script within the same program itself. I don't want to create multiple programs. So here, what I'm going to do right now means let app is equal to XCUI application. So if you guys remember, as part of our previous session, we have studied the significance of the XCUI application. What is this XCUI application? This is the most important class available in an XCUI test for the UI test automation framework. And this represents the iOS application, the way to interact with the application, to launch the app, to terminate the app, to locate elements inside the application and to validate the objects and attributes. Everything this XCUI application is the most important thing. And moreover, this XCUI application is extending XCUI element. Okay, XCUI element class. Okay, and this XCUI application is the root element in the app hierarchy. Okay, so that's the reason we are creating an instance to an XUI application and you are storing it in an app right now. So what I'm going to do right now means app dot dot launch method. We know that launch is a method which is used to launch that particular application. And right now, what I'm doing means if you see this line app dot launch next to this one in the starting, you can find a line number, line number 39 something, right? So how exactly we can add a debug point? So on the line number, if you tap it, okay, on a line number, if you tap it, a blue color line is getting highlighted with which we can say that at this particular line, the debug point got added. So when you run your function, basically, whenever the debug point is there, your test script execution will pass there. Okay, let me try to run this function and see what it is happening. So here for this UI catalog application, the device that I picked is an iPhone 12 Pro Max. And in this function, I have a created a logic to just launch the app. That's it. And uh, after launching the app, I asked it to wait for an instance basically. Okay, the device got launched. And of course, it's trying to establish a connection with that particular device. So usually, how would I know whether it is in a debugging mode or not means whenever this application or the execution is in a debugging mode, the UI will change basically. The UI perspective or the debugging mode will be enabled. See if you can see now, the control is in this particular line and this kind of command prompt or we can say this kind of user interface will display for us where in which we can perform certain operations here in the terminal okay so here the line number 39 the debugging mode got enabled and it doesn't perform any operation and in this particular new window if you clearly observe whenever you mouse over on it there is a step over button is there click on a step over so it's going to perform one particular action so here the step over is app got launched on that device now here, what I want to do means in this debugging mode, in this newly opened window, with the help of this one, I want to locate my objects on this UI catalog application. And of course, with that objects, I want to cross check whether I'm performing the operations or not. So in order to do so, the first and foremost thing that we are going to use here is the PO. PO means it's a print object. 
okay it's a print object so we are using a print object so print object what i want to print as of now i don't know anything about this application so as of now the one that i have known is an xui application right we know something about a xui application so that's the reason print object xui application okay i just performed this xui application hit enter button so whenever you hit an enter button you are getting an error message so i just added a braces okay so i forgot to add a basis in the first line so i just added the braces and whenever i use the print object of xui application the complete app instance is getting printed here and a few minutes before we observed that okay few minutes before we observed that uh, using this xui application the complete app instance is being stored that's what we have studied and whenever it got a printed even the complete app information is being displayed okay whatever the elements are there on that particular application everything is being displayed here okay and if you drill down here and if you can see i can see the object as a static text see here the attribute as a static text and ui kit catalog so on this particular application whatever we are dealing with which is in ui catalog most of the objects are with a static text itself static text activity indicator if you see activity indicators is the first option which is having a static text so with the help of a po xui application uh, it's printing the complete app source code and i realized it is that all the objects in this screen are having a static text and of course there are a very less buttons are there okay so what i am going to do right now means pivo xui application dot buttons so i am asking my program or i am asking my xui to get how many buttons are there in this screen so guys initially i used to print xui application now i am printing this button so whenever you printed the buttons see here all the buttons in the screen got displayed here but none of the button has a text out over there this is what the output is and the buttons are not having text so what i am going to do right now means the print static text i am trying to print the static text here and see whenever we use the static text command here if you observe the complete object information we are getting it as an output static text activity indicator control static text alert of you so it means moving ahead if at all you want to identify an object i can use a static text attribute okay that's fine so print object xui application right on which so we have a used a uh, you know um, static text we have used the buttons out over there we can also use okay we can also use maybe alert if at all any alerts are there it's going to print those alerts basically so if something is there that information will be displayed as an output here okay if something is there that it will display as an output there that's it as simple as it so like this we can retrieve that information okay we can retrieve that information and we can print it see here we have a seen buttons right there is a check boxes so here what i am going to do right now means here xui application dot a check boxes to see whether there are any check boxes are there in that application or not if the respect to information is there of course that will print that information as an output if the desired object with the attribute whatever you have specified were not there it will not print that particular information see here a data picker so let me try to use the date picker so what i am clear if you clearly observe what i am doing right now means so whatever the various options are there i am just checking it here in my code and i am trying to use that information here so date picker is also not there perfect so what i understood is for all these objects i can use a static text okay for all these objects whatever it is displaying i can use a static text 
So here, maybe if you see this text field internally, these are the various text fields are there, right? We have a various text fields are there. So here, dot, I, try, I will try to use a text fields and hit an enter button, okay? See here, these many text fields are there on the current app instance. And the last text field is enter the search text. See here, enter the search text is the last text field that's being displayed. If you scroll down a bit, see here, enter the search text. So here, so this is the chunk basically. Okay, what happened? So here, enter the search text is the last text field that it's being populated. Almost all the text fields are retrieving here. So with this note, one point that we have observed is whenever you are debugging your test script with the help of a print object instance and XUI application, whatever the attributes you want, you know, you can get that information here. But in order to get that particular attributes, the first and foremost thing that you need to know is what type it is. So if you observe all these are a text fields and if you observe here, all these are a static text. So if you observe some other buttons will be there. So you need to specify what type of object you are having so that your debugging mode will retrieve all that information and it will print it here. And you can take that information and you can write it in your program. Of course, within the debugging mode itself, you can write down a program also. Let me show you here. So, PO of XUI application dot, earlier we have noticed that all these are a static text. Out of all these static text, I want to perform an operation on, so out of all these static text, I want to perform an operation on a button. So, among all the static text, I'm giving buttons as an input. In the application, whatever the static text are there, from that static text, identify the button on which perform a tap operation, hit enter button. So whenever you perform a hit enter button, see here in the application, if you observe, buttons got a clicked and the respective screen got a populated here. Maybe if you have some doubts, so here is a search is there, right? I'm clicking on a search, okay. So in this program, Instead of this button, I'm using a search. What is the actual text? Okay, search is the actual text here. And I am asking to perform a tap operation. If you go back here and see, it performed a click operation on that. So it means using the XCA application instance as it is a static text in which specify the desired text dot the desired operation you can perform. So in the debugging mode, you have a created this. You can simply copy this instance, copy this line of a code and directly place it in your program and you can execute it. Of course, automatically your program will execute that. This way of generating a program from a debugging mode and executing it, we will see as part of a next session, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.